can't imagine you ever saying, um, bring me some of the boxes that we brought back from the White House. I'd like to look at them. Did you ever do that? I would have the right to do that. There's nothing wrong with but it. But I know you. I don't think you would do well, it. Well, I don't have a lot of time, but I would have the right to do that. Right. I would do that. There'd be All right, let me wrong. move on. Let me Remember hit. this. Yeah. This is the Presidential Records Act. I have the right to take stuff. Do you know that they ended up paying Richard Nixon, I think, $18 million for what he had? They did the Presidential Records Act. I have the right to take stuff. I have the right to look at stuff. Oh, my God. Joe, that's the famous interview from March 27th where Sean Hannity was trying to coach Donald Trump out of an indictment, out of implicating himself. But he indicts and himself. And Donald Trump went in again and again and again. And we'll talk to Chuck Rosenberg about this, but he keeps citing the Presidential Records Act. He did it in that CNN town hall a couple of weeks ago when he said infamously, I took what I took, saying, yes, I did take all those classified documents. He's completely wrong. He either doesn't understand the Presidential Records Act or is just lying about it. But that interview was something. Well, he understands it. There's been testimony that he understands it extraordinarily well. He, he actually walked through it with, with several people who have testified about how much he understands the process uh, of classification and declassifying. He just... I... I um, Mm. Well, there's just no way. But he's just not that smart. Mm. He's really not. I mean, if he's a fascist, he's like a Hogan's Heroes, like a guard type of fascist. He's just not <laughs> that smart. I mean, the thing is, the guy says George Conway, like Sean Hannity is saying, I know you wouldn't commit a crime. I can commit a crime if I want to. Okay, but Mr. President, I know you wouldn't commit this crime. I can commit that crime if I want to. Aye. Sean Hannity says, okay. Let's move on. <laughs> Talk about the oh my God. college campuses. I mean, there is so much there going to intent time and time again. And I say he's not smart because he said things in the CNN town hall meeting that are going to get him in legal trouble as well. Time and again, he admits, he admits the intent to commit that crime publicly in public spaces. Well, that's absolutely right. And the best evidence that he has created, that the best evidence against him is evidence that he has created by having the documents in his office, by having the documents in his home, by having, by having, by talking to lawyers who then uh, try to try to get them to commit illegal acts and then refusing and then a court holding that basically that he, that there is no attorney client privilege because of he, he was trying to co uh, commit criminal acts. And you're right. He's just absolutely absolutely not bright at all he's 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 a dope and 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 he but he is a stubborn dope and that's the reason why he's here today mm -hmm. and he he had every opportunity as we've been pointing out to give these documents back if he had invited Mara over to Mar-a-Lago Mar-a-Lago in this, in the middle of last year a year ago we would not be here today we might not have even heard about the incident because it would have been just viewed as, oh well, there were some there were some misplaced documents and he gave them back. It wouldn't it wouldn't be a big deal. So Chuck Rosenberg, there's such a fog of disinformation just mm -hmm. flowing from so many sources over the last twelve hours or so about why this happened, what happened. Oh, it's just like what Joe Biden did. No, it's not. And we can get into that. It's Joe Biden going directly after his political opponent. No, we just explained why that's not true. And that, Joe, that Donald Trump had the right to take these records under the Presidential Records Act. That is just not true. We've explained that many times over the last few months. Can you explain, because we do have to reestablish the facts here, can you explain what the Presidential Records Act does say and what it does not say? Sure, Willie. So it is important to establish the baseline. The Presidential Red Records Act um, requires that presidents return to the American people through the National Archives documents generated by their administration. This routinely happens at the end of a presidency. Now, the end of a presidency may be chaotic, but it doesn't obviate the need for a president and his staff 
to abide the law. And the law requires, the law holds, that the records of a presidential administration do not belong to the individual president. They belong to the American people. And the National Archives is the caretaker on our behalf. By the way, and to George's point, I think it's an important one. Without the obstruction, without counseling witnesses to lie, without hiding documents, without concealing evidence, you may not have a case at all. All of that underscores a defendant's guilt, his intent. And when you lie or obfuscate or obstruct, it suggests that the thing you are obstructing, the thing you are obfuscating, was a crime. When a judge, a federal judge, found that the attorney-client privilege uh, had been um, obliterated, and that the government was entitled to speak to one of Mr. Trump's attorneys, which, by the way, is an extraordinary thing. I can count on one finger the number of times that happened to me in my public prosecutorial career. That's an extraordinary thing to allow the government to peek behind that curtain. It's because there were underlying acts of obstruction. And so mm -hmm. the Presidential Records Act is clear. The records belong to the American people, not to the president. And trying to obstruct NARA, the National Archives, and its work to retrieve the documents and then counseling witnesses to lie is a serious, serious federal crime. Yeah, you know, uh, Mika, I just, uh, I'm, I'm communicating with Richard Haas. Uh, mm -hmm. our golf correspondent. Yeah, yeah. And young Richard asks this. He <laughs> says, one big question, mystery. <clears throat> Why did Trump take and hold the documents? What was the motive? That's, that's, Why would he do that? Why? The answer goes what? back to the first thing we said is he's a dope, right? But but also more to the point, and this is what he he hasn't understood. He doesn't understand <clears throat> where he is now, what arena he's just walked into the middle mm -hmm, of, okay? Mm -hmm. He's he he thought they were his mm. and he thought that nobody could tell him they weren't his. And when he even when even though he knew he was violating the law, he thought as a mm -hmm. bully that he could hold the documents, that he could keep the documents. This is a guy that's bullied people his entire life. He's always stayed five minutes away from from imminent destruction mm -hmm. and he survived it his whole life and so yeah. he thinks this is just like fighting the new york post leaking documents to the new york post about how he's great having sex he thinks this is leaking to, to the daily news changing his his name uh, so they could say oh that donald trump is a man about town and yeah. I, what, what 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 name did he use to be that publicist john miller john Barron, John Miller, John, no, John, John Miller. Barron, yeah. uh, he he thinks that this is okay. like uh, uh, the Mueller report that that he can just push all of this aside in life. And I'm serious. He's been doing this since the mid 1970s, and he's gotten away with it. Any lawyer will tell you if there is if, if they're a dumb country lawyer like me, especially. There's a reason to stay away from the federal courthouse whenever possible. Yeah. I mean, it, it's frightening when you walk through those doors. It's all business. It's the reason Giuliani would lie outside uh, and, 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 and make all of these outrageous claims about stolen elections and go inside. The federal judge would say, are you suggesting there's widespread uh, uh, fraud in this election? And Giuliani would go, no, no, sir. No, sir, I am not. Trump thought he could bully people He's now going to find out, and he's going to be delivered the harshest lesson of his life, that you can't bully federal judges. You can't bully the feds themselves. And he's going to pay for this. He may pay for it with his liberty unless he, he, he cops a deal. He's going to have to plea, or I'm predicting he's going to get charged and very likely will spend time in jail. So I want to... 